Hey guys, we're going to cover the book Automate the Boring Stuff by Al Swaggart, which is a great book for complete beginners to get into Python programming. And it's really focused around working on specific projects that are centered around automating repetitive tasks and really making your life a lot easier. So to follow along with the book, you can read the book for free if you head over to automatetheboringstuff.com. And over here, you're going to find the entire content of the book in the latest version. If you prefer, though, of course, the book is also available, for example, on Amazon. So if you prefer a physical copy, you can head over there and then purchase the book. There's a link in the description down below if you want to support the channel. Now, in terms of the structure of this book, we're going to start with some Python programming basics just to cover the fundamentals which we'll need in order to then automate different tasks. We're going to start out by learning about Python basics, such as expressions, and then also flow control, functions, lists, and additional data types that we need when we work with Python. And then in the second part, it gets interesting. Here we are focusing on actually automating different tasks. So we will start out by learning about regular expressions, and then we're going to automate different tasks, such as reading and writing files doing some web scraping, getting data from the, from the web and then working with it, but then also, for example, working with Excel spreadsheets and also with Google Sheets. Now, in order to get started, we of course need to, first of all, make sure that we have the current version of Python installed. And to do that, we can head over to python.org slash downloads. And depending on whether you're using Windows, Mac OS or Linux, you'll find the appropriate version to download here. So currently that is a version 3.10.4. You can download it and install it and you will be guided through the different steps to do that. In addition, we also need a text editor to work with. Here we can, for example, use Mu as an editor, which is available for free to download on codewiz.mu. Alternatively, if you already are using a text editor, for example, Sublime Text, or for example, Visual Studio Code, feel free to use that. We are going to use Mu for this book. We can also download this editor here, and once downloaded, we can install it. Now, once we installed both Python and Mu, we can open our code editor, so Mu in our case, and we're going to see the screen here. Now, in order to easily check if Python is installed properly and just to get familiar with the very basic Python syntax, we can click on REPL up here, and this is going to open a separate section here at the bottom. And from here we can see the version of Python that's being used, and we have a blinking cursor here, and now we can enter any command. For example, we can type out print, and then in parentheses we can type what we want to print, so hello world for example, we can press enter, and that's being printed out just below. And this is actually Python syntax, so we basically wrote our first part of Python here. Now, if you encounter any errors while working with Python, let's say, for example, we are trying to do an operation that's invalid. So here we are trying to add two numbers, but the first number you can see is in those quotation marks. It's what's called a string. So it's actually not rendered as a number, but instead it's basically a piece of text. If we try to add those two numbers, we can see we get a type error. And whenever we encounter these kind of errors, it can sometimes be a little bit tricky to debug that and to figure out what actually is the issue with this. In such a case, the easiest way to handle this is to actually Google this error message. We could just go ahead and select this error message, copy it, and then Google for it. And when you Google for any such error messages, one of the first results that's typically going to show up is a website called Stack Overflow. And Stack Overflow is a really great resource for programmers. Here you can find a lot of different answers about different programming errors or questions. So in this case here we could just click on this first link, we're redirected over to Stack Overflow, and here we have a question, and of course we have the answers. So the highest Upvoted answer is typically the one at the very top. And then we can have a look and see what the issue might be. And here we can see that one way of solving this would be to cast 
the number to a string. We don't have to understand that yet, but if we try this approach here and we head back over to our editor, we could just try this. So we can add str around the number. And now we are basically adding this as a string. That's maybe not necessarily what we want, but that's one way of resolving this issue. Another option of actually achieving what we want is to either remove the quotation marks around the number 42, or alternatively, we could also turn that number, which is currently represented as a string, into a number by writing int and then parentheses, and that basically turns this number, which is currently represented as a string, into an actual number, and then the result is properly displayed. This is a little bit more advanced, but this just shows which options are available to us when we actually run into an error and how we can resolve this. All right, so these are the very basics. Now we can get into actually the first topics and learn about how to work with Python. And specifically, we are going to start out by learning about expressions in the next video.